And I started trading about eight years ago. And I lost money in the market when I started, like many people do. You don't, you're not born usually knowing how to trade. And then I created my own system. So I created my own system and my own method. And it, and that's all that I do. That's all that I do. And then after a couple of years of trading, my friends encouraged me to teach what I know to people. And I, I didn't actually start teaching right away. I started just putting videos on YouTube. And for those of you that have never been to my YouTube site, Paul can put the link you know, in the room there. You can go and subscribe to my YouTube page. I have a lot of plays of the days I put on YouTube past webinars and market reviews. And then I decided to teach a class on my method. And actually my class is the original information that I wrote for myself. I literally wrote everything down and had all the sheets and then I put it into a PowerPoint. So my class is very authentic. It's everything that I designed myself in the market to make money. So when I when I first started trading, like everybody else, I learned a lot of stuff about a lot of things, which was good information. You can get stuff in books and you can get things from webinars. And I'm sure those of you that are here have been to other webinars. But you don't always learn how to make money. <clears throat> so the, the problem that I had and the reason that I ended up deciding to do my own thing was everything that I went to, I learned something, but, uh, but I couldn't translate it to cash. And at the time, I wanted to I wanted to find a full time job, and I had a good job. I was doing mortgages, but the industry was changing, and I kind of saw the writing on the wall. So I wanted to replace my current income with with another income that was very similar, or at least had the potential to make unlimited income. Because when I was doing mortgages, I was commissioned, so I always had the potential every year. If I did a lot of loans, I, I made more money. Okay. Trading is kind of very similar, which is probably why I enjoy it. The more money you risk, actually, size positions, and we'll talk about position sizing tonight, the more you can make. So, for example, if you take 5,000 shares of something, I'm just going to write this in the room, okay, and you short a stock, okay, and you have 5,000 shares short, if you short something at $10, okay, short it, and you're betting that the price is dropping if you short. If it goes to $9, I'm just being very simple here. If it goes to $9, you have a dollar profit. So if you have a dollar profit times 5,000 shares, I just thought day trading is, then you'd, have, you'd make what, $5,000. So we'll talk about some of the trades here tonight that we've done in the last week or two weeks in the room, but, but really it's about the quantity. So the idea of making $250,000 a year may seem like a lot of money for people if you're not making it or if you're trading right now and you're losing, but it's not if you get the direction right in a stock that you take the position in. For the example, the one I just showed you, if you had gone long the stock at $10 and it dropped to $9 and you had 5,000 shares, you would have lost $5,000 instead of making $5,000 if, if the stock price went up. So how do you make money in the market? You make money in the market taking a position in the correct direction. And how do you make a lot of money in the market, whether it's 100 grand a year or 200 grand a year or 300 grand a year, it's by the position sign, okay? And as a day trader, I'm very nimble, so I'm in and out of my trades very, very quickly. So I'm, I'm not taking 1 million shares of something, okay? Hedge funds, banks, they trade stocks with high liquidity and volume and take big sizes. But what I do, I'm looking for those big stocks to trade, okay? So does anyone have any questions so far before we get going? All right, let's get started. So here's my email. If you're interested in more information, you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com or email Paul. Paul's in the room tonight as well. Or you can feel free to give me a call, 929-3200-GAP, okay? Anyways, here's all of my social media sites. Like I said, you can go there and you can follow me mostly on the, the YouTube. I think it's a good site. So as I was saying earlier, it's about thinking about your future, planning for your future. When I was making the transition for myself, knowing that, that I didn't want to keep doing my mortgage job, I was in the process of planning for the future. How am I going to get to the next level of my life? And I wanted to have a bright future. And if you're doing something right now, whether it's a trading strategy in the market or a job that you don't like, 
and you feel like your future is not bright, you have to change that, okay? It is about living in the now. So I know this, this, is, this is where the balance comes in. You have to say, I'm here right now. I'm living in the now. I'm living in the now, and I want to create the future that I want, okay? I want to create the future that I want for my life. So you take where you are right now, and you look ahead, and you say, how can I get to this place in six months or one year? to make 250 grand a year, to be successful as a trader, to quit my job if you want to. And that was always my goal. Or maybe you just want to do it for retirement, for extra money you want to trade. But for me, I wasn't in that survival mode when, when I was making the transition. I wanted to thrive. I wanted to have a career where I could make hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars, which, by the way, you can in the market. How? Again, same concept, same principle. It's about share size. It's about share quantity, okay? And that's what it's about. So if you get the directional bias correct of big money, you can make a lot of money in the market. You can. Not just $250,000 a year. Like I said, you can make much, much more. The potential for profits is unlimited if you can predict the direction of a stock or the market accurately. So think about what are your goals. Are your goals this much money, whatever you're making right now, if you're trading, what, what are you trying to make? A thousand dollars a day, a thousand dollars a week, a hundred bucks a day. I don't know. What are your income goals for trading? What are your income goals right now in your career? And are you making them? Are you achieving them? Are you on pace? We're more than halfway into the calendar year. Between now and the end of the year, are you going to hit your income goals for the year? Are you going to make the money, more money this year than you did last year? Are you going to make same or are you going to make less? Okay. Think about this. Sometimes we get, we all of a sudden time just flies by, but you still have, you know, August, September, October, November, December, five more months left in the year. You could change your income level for the year, for the calendar year of 2016, if you decide to learn how to trade and become profitable. You've got plenty of time. You can do it. So how do I do it? I chunk it out. I chunk it out as a day trade. And then, like I said, I am doing options trades, but I am doing only one trade a day when I trade. So this sounds like a lot of money for some of you, especially if you're not making it, but really comes out to be about $1,000 a day. So $1,000 a day is $5,000 a week. And some days you will make more than $1,000 in a trade. Some days you may not trade at all, okay? And so, again, it's about chunking it out to get to the goal. Now, going back to the example I used previously, a dollar move in something if you have 1,000 shares is what? $1,000, okay? 50 cents in something with 2,000 shares is what? $1,000. I'm talking about a 50 cent move in a stock, okay? 25 cent move, share size is $4,000. I mean, a 4,000 shares is 1,000 bucks. So you don't even need something to move a dollar necessarily every day. Once you start to take three, four, five thousand 5,000 shares in something, you can get a quick short move in something and make a 1,000 bucks. So, you know, this is how you're doing it. You're chunking it out. And stocks move like this all the time. And sometimes you get things that move way, way more than that. We'll look at one of the ones uh, that the trading room did today. So they happen all the time. you just got to look for them. Here with DDD, this is, again, a very cheap stock. Even cheap stocks at this price point, this is the ticker symbol of DDD, was a short. You see here with the stock, these red bars to pick the drop in price. Again, if you short it and the stock is dropping in price, you're getting the direction right, boom, you make the money. you got to take the trade to get in it. But this is more than a dollar. Nice, nice move, but again, the price point is very, very cheap. Sometimes I trade stocks that are over $100, but it's very rare. I'd say most of the stocks that I trade, again, I'm an equity trader, between $5 and maybe $65, okay? Most of the ones that I am doing. So here was the list of the last 10 trading days. This doesn't include today, which we will go over today's trade. But there were 12 trades in the last 10 days called in the room by either me or Paul. Nine were winners and three were losers. Okay, so this is a 75% win ratio. What does that mean? That means that out of 12 trades, nine works, three were losers. So you can see here with a system where you're depicting or predicting the directional bias and you take the trade, if you know where it's going to go, you don't have that many losers. Okay, and so obviously if you're risking 
a couple hundred dollars a trade or a thousand dollars a trade, and some trades are worth more than a thousand dollars, you can see how you can make the money. So with a one thousand dollar risk in these 10 days, and again, this doesn't include today, you could have made eleven thousand dollars. So you see how you can get to the goal of you know making over 200 grand a year. So let's go over the DDD. Now, as I was saying, I have a system that predicts direction of bias. How am I doing it? Well, I look at the daily chart. I look at the daily chart of a stock that's doing what? That's gapping. Now, what is a gap? For those of you that have no idea what a gap is, I'm going to explain it. And if you already do, this is just going to be a review for you. Stock closed here, okay, the night before. At 4 o'clock Eastern time, the U.S. market has a close. At 9.30, the stock opens in the morning. Between 4 o'clock and 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, what happens? The stock had a move. The move can happen in the post-market or the pre-market hours, but it creates the stock to gap. So what is a gap? It's just the difference between the close and the open. That's all the stock is, okay? It's different between the close and the opening price. So this close here ran 14-something, and open the next day here ran 13-something. So that's the gap. So in the morning, I'm looking for these, and you can look for them on a scanner, like the DDD or many other things, to see what is gapping. And then I have a method. It's a rating system that I use on the daily chart. It's a 26-point rating system where I will rate the gap on the daily chart to predict whether or not I should short this or go long it or, or do nothing with it, okay, or do nothing with it at all, okay? So this is what it is. Now, how do you make the money? You have to still wait till the stock opens. This is the open, okay? So you wait till it opens. 9.30, this is a one-minute chart. So the previous chart was a daily chart. I'm taking the trades on a one-minute chart. So the stock opens right here at 9.30. 9.30, 9.31, 9.32, 9.33, 9.34. Boom, you can short it. And actually, there was a lot of short entries you could have done in this one. But here is the drop. So I'm taking the trade short. And, and again, when I'm shorting, I'm betting the stock price is going to go down. And if I get it right, I make money, whatever size you take. And in this case, it was a short. But I know, based on the daily chart, even before 930, that I can predict it's a short or a long. Does this make sense? Now, if you did this trade, okay, for example, Price of the entry was what? 1348. Stop 1383. Share size is what? 3,000 shares. That's the share size that if you wanted to risk a thousand bucks or thereabouts, you would have taken. Now every trade I do, I put in a stop. So I take the trade short and I put in a stop. Now why do I put a stop? I put a stop in because what if the trade doesn't work? And again, you saw there were three losers in the room in the last 10 days. So if, if I take a trade and it doesn't work, I want to have a fixed loss. And again, this is something that helps you be profitable because you keep the money then from the gainers. Otherwise, you have unlimited losses if something goes against you. Okay? So I don't trade like that. I use a stop. It's a limit order stop. If you have questions about that, ask me now. Anyways, then the exit's 1276. So this profit with a $1,000 risk is what? 2160 bucks. So you take the train, boom, get the drop, and you're out. Let's go back and look. Again, the directional bias is down. It's to the downside. But how do I know to predict this? Because of the gap. Here's a one-minute chart. Here's where it closed the night before. Here's where it opened the next day. It's because of the gap. You don't know. It's easy to say now because this is already after the fact in the chart for now. But in the morning, this didn't happen yet. You don't even know. You're seeing the gap in the pre-market data or the post-market data. Nothing's printed here yet, okay? Does that make sense? Let me know if anyone has any questions about that. If you're not familiar with gaps, you may not understand what I'm saying, but that's how I'm making the prediction of the directional bias. And what happens is, and we were, we were talking about this in one of the other webinars, many, many people are trying to understand what makes a gap. Sometimes a stock gaps overnight or in the next morning based on earnings. Sometimes it gaps based on bad news or data or something happening. It could gap for many, many reasons, okay? So there's lots of reasons something will gap. 
And, and, and there's tons of stocks to gap every day, but you can't always get one that you can predict in the right direction. And that's why I came up with the rating system. Now let's look here at this one. Netflix actually was last week and it had earnings. So this gap's mainly earnings. So the stock closed here the night before and then gapped down. Here it was, it just collapsed. So the night before, this was like at 90, 99 something or 98 something the night before it closed, four o'clock Eastern time and in the morning, boom. Guess what? Gaps down here to like 86 something. Okay. Netflix. Here's the one minute chart. So I rated this per my system. I was predicting it was a short, but guess what? It opened. It had a big green bar, huge green bar. You might have thought this was a long. Went over the high of the day a couple of times here and had some big green bars, but it was a short. And how did I know? Because my rating system predicted on the daily chart that it was a short. And so I shorted it. And then I put the stop. So the stop was 87.10. So I shorted it in here, waited, rallied back, held, held the stop. You could have shorted it again. And then here's the money if you're short. So do you see here, if you had gone long this, if you had predicted the direction of bias long, you would have been stopped out, broke the low of the day, and then kept going. But if you shorted it and put the stop where I did, you would have made money because here's what it did. So every trade I take, I'm looking to get the move in the morning. The morning, the morning, the morning, I'm in and I'm out quickly. That's what I do. Really, really quickly, I try to take the trade. So this entry was short. You shorted at 86.04. Stop is 87.10. Share size is what? If you're risking 1000 bucks, again, your risk should be equal in most of the trades you do or close to it. 1000 shares is what? You risk 1060 bucks. Exit, 85.05. Okay. Total profit, $990. And there you go. So if you're looking to make $1,000 a day, close enough. I always tell people, trade in the morning. Don't keep trading. If you're up in the morning, stop. That was a, something that it took me a long time to get in the habit of doing. And so I run a live trading room where I call my trades live and, and I trade live, but I close it down no later than 11 o'clock every day and some days earlier than that. It's very, very important to keep the money that you make in the market, okay? Any questions from anyone so far? Everybody's quiet. Does everyone understand what I'm talking about about a gap? Is, is anybody here that's never traded in their life before that doesn't know a chart or understand a chart or candlesticks in the chart? Tell me. I don't know what everybody knows and what people don't know. So don't be afraid to ask. And again, I'm the only one that can see everybody and see the question. Or Paul can write it in the room. Okay, I'm going to keep going. No one has questions. Okay, let's talk about the next one. So we gave the stats for the last 10 days. Here was the DFS. DFS was an earnings one too, okay? Closed here the night before at four o'clock, boom, gap down. Gap down here to like 56 something. So this tail depicts the drop in price here that happened quickly, quickly into the morning. So you're, you're looking to predict what should I do with this in the morning? All my trades I'm looking to get in between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. That's when the moves happen. That's when the momentum's happen. That's when I get these good, solid entries in the one-minute charts that have the, the push, okay? And in this case, it's the push down. And, and for those of you that don't know me, I prefer to short. You can go long using my system, but I find that shorts just happen very fast, and they happen quickly, so I prefer, I prefer to short. So anyways, the stock rally here into the open. Boom. You could short shorted it, and here. So this is 930, 931, 932, 933, 934, 935, 936. And there it is. You could have shorted this and been done in less than five minutes. And again, here's the time of the day that you're looking to trade between 9.30 and 10. So here is the entry price short, 56.59. Stop, again, always putting a stop because the stop protects you. It's like the insurance. If the trade fails, I will only lose whatever I risked, which is based on the share quantity. So if you took 2,500 shares, you'd risk what? 1,050 bucks. Again, this should be pretty close for the same each time. 
If you want to risk $500, fine. $500, $500, $500, $500. You take half the share size. It, either way, it should be close to equal. Exit here, 55.92. This dropped harder. Okay, this actually dropped almost 50 cents more down into itself. But once you get a sell off like this, you're like, you, oops, sorry about that. Once you get a sell off like this, you're watching it, watching it, watching it in the level two, and, and you just take it wherever you get out. Okay? So total profit on this is 1,675 bucks. Now I do teach in the class targets. In the back of the deal. I do teach in the class targets. You do have to watch the trade when you're getting close to a first target. Okay. Sometimes things will go to the dream target, but you never know. And so if you're up, you know that you're up. You know, you know the money's there. His money is not yours until you're actually out of the, physically out of the trade. Okay. So that was another good one. INTC was Thursday. INTC was Thursday of last week. Another gap down. Stock closed here. Boom. Gap down. Drop. Fell. Nice. What? Short move. Again, you look at the daily chart. You predict the movement. You predict the movement based on the gap, based on the rating system method that I've devised. It's 26 points. I'm not looking for a perfect score. I'm looking for 20 or more. 20 or more means that it's a high level probability of working in the direction of the gap. So in the case of a short, if it raised 20 points or more, I have a high probability that I can short it and make money, it's going to go down. If the stock gaps up, it's a high probability if it raised 20 points or more to gap up that it's a long and you can go long the stock. So again, it's about making money in the right direction because it's the only way you're going to profit. If you try to go long the stock, you long. So here was this one. Open, rallied, dropped, broke, Rallied up again, set the high of the day at 9.30 here into the open, okay? Boom. You could have taken it here. You could have taken it here. You could have actually done a later trade in this as well. Usually, I get in my trades in the morning part of the day very quickly, the first setup. But this had a couple couple entries here too. And do you see here again the time of the day that you're in it? Okay. So, this was a nice one. Paul did this one. He entered it very aggressively in the first bar. And then once it started going, he tightened up the stop. So the profit in this, where he had lowered the stop, was 280 bucks. I did not trade or run the room this day. But if you had followed all the way down, it actually went down to $34 and broke 34 But this is how Paul chose to play it, because he aggressively entered it here, and then he protected his profit. Some people do this. They take the trade. And then they immediately protect the profits, a small amount of the profits, or get out of some, or they put the stop at break even. I usually let it ride, or get out of half and let the whole rest of it ride. You have to decide your own money management. But in this case, if you held it, it went more. But this is how the room played it and how Paul played it. So you can be aggressive, but if you tighten up your stop, you know, you may not get the whole move. Either way, most of my trades don't try to beat out by 10. And that's like the time of the day that I try to be out of my day trade. And that's another benefit of actually day trading gaps because the moves in them happen so quickly in the morning, you can take the trades and be done quickly. A lot of other setups and strategies are out there. You kind of got to wait till 10 o'clock or later to take them. And you got to have the market with you. And then you have to get the market direction right. If you don't get the market direction right, then sometimes you don't get the setup that day and in the strategy that you're trading if you need the market with you. What I do is completely independent of market direction. In fact, I created my system during the time the market has been rallying, and my system, I do more shorts than long. I prefer to short, okay? So I focus on this downside more. Panic comes into stocks when their price drops, and, and no one really panics when something's rising. So you don't have that panic emotion. Things tend to slowly rise, where when things drop, they tend to drop fast. So that's just, you know, common sense. Anyways, here's another one, MCF. Stock closed here, boom, gap down. Again, this is happening when? At night or in the morning. So this is a daily chart of this MCF. Again, every day you'll trade a different symbol if you trade with me. I never know. I never know until I see the gap. And you don't see the gap till night or the morning. Okay. So closed here, gap down, you rate it. Per my system, is it good or not? Is it a short or a long? You got to know. You will not make money on this today if you go along with stock. Okay. So here's the move, and it drops. 
this was in a five minute chart. So this is usually a trade in one minute, but you can do five minute setups. You have to be a little bit more patient, slightly more patient, okay? Anyway, still had a nice move here, dropped, broke, and you could have held this, you could have held this for a long, long time but it actually did make a later move. So sometimes they go very, very quickly and sometimes they take a little bit longer. This was a much larger move here that took a little bit long to get going, but it still had a beautiful sell off. Price of the entry was 10.06, stop 10.21. This is a good share size. Again, it's all about the quantity, but you're allowed to take it from the stop because the stop was a baby stop. Okay, this is a really good stop. The stop is the difference between the where you're putting the stop and the entry, and that's how you're sizing yourself. So with 6,000 shares, you'd be risking what? $900. So there were two exits on this, close enough to the price, same price. Total profit, $3,150. Okay? So here you have it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful profit. Again, if your goal is $5,000 a week, you just made more than half your goal for the week in one trade. So going back to the concept of what I was saying about chunking it out, chunking it, chunking it, chunking it, this is why you got to keep your losses low. So if you get up in the morning and something doesn't meet your criteria, you don't trade. I don't trade if I don't have a gap that rates 20 points or more. If I get up in the morning and there is a gap that rates 15 points, then I'm not doing it. It's 20 or more per my system. If, I, if there's gaps, but they don't meet the rating, then I can't do them either. What if you get up in the morning and there's three good gaps and every gap rates 20 points or more? You can do all three. Me personally, though, I usually like to do one trade a day. One trade a day limits your losses and it keeps you very focused. And, and you got to pay attention because these things move, move very, very quickly. So does anyone have any questions about that? So that was actually all of last week's trading. Dwayne, Dwayne is typing. I don't know if you have a question there. I missed it. It looks like it's stuck. JA is asking me about the points. You, might, I saw you signed in late. My method, my system, looks at the daily chart of a stock, okay? And I have a rating system. This is what I teach in the class. It's 16 hours long, okay? I have 26 points on the daily chart. I go through the checklist. It's a checklist of points, and I tally them up. If I if they total 20 or more, I can train the gap in the direction of the gap. So if the stock is gapping up and it rates 20 points or more, I can go long. If the stock is gapping down and it rates 20 points or more, I can short it. But I know before 930, and that's how you're making the prediction because you've got the rating system and you're seeing the gap live. You see the gap live, you can see gaps live right now tonight. It's six o'clock at night, the stocks that are reporting, the stocks that are gapping live. You can get up in the morning at 7 a.m. tomorrow early and see stocks gapping. The market gaps a lot. Somebody wants me to look at a gap that's gapping at night, you can plop it in the room. I didn't have time to look what's, what's out tonight, but I can look at something. So, good question though. How much money you make, as I was saying them before, has to do with the size. It's the size, the size, the size, it's the size quantity. And, and, and it's just getting the direction right. So this is common sense. My strategy is based on common sense because, number one, you can't make money if you're in the wrong direction. That's common sense. People try to get tricky and they say, well, I'm going to take this again. So they, there's, no, that doesn't make any sense. Look at what's happening. Have a reason for doing it. Have a system. So my system is the, is the rating system, the 26 points. Okay. But the 26 points actually predict institutional moves, positions in stocks. Banks, hedge funds, trade stocks. They go long stocks and they sell stocks and they short stocks. So my rating system predicts what institutional money or big money, I call it, will do in a stock. On that live day, on the live, live day, it's following the big money, following funds, institutional money, not traders like you and me. It's, it's people that are trading huge, massive, large positions. So the, the, I created all the point system, like Ja had asked about. I created that system based off of what are institutions doing or what are they going to do? Because you've got to know what they're going to do ahead of time, okay? And that's how you know. Now, this was today's. This was Guild, okay? Stock closed here, boom. So here's the night before, here's the morning. 
stock closed here and then open here. So you get up in the morning, you don't even know if it's going to sell off like this, but you're trying to predict it. How do you do it? You look at the rating system. If it totals 20 or more, you say, this is a good one. I can short it. And it was a good one. And it had a big sell-off. Again, if you had gone long this, you would have lost. Now, why is the common sense around this? Again, because you're, you're predicting with the point, if an institution is going to sell their position in guilt, because you don't get a bar like this. This is a huge monster bar to the downside. Again, the red depicts the drop. This is a short that had a huge move, and you wouldn't get a move like this in a stock at this price point, 80 some dollar price point. You would not get a sell-off like this unless an institution wanted to dump their stock in it. And, and it doesn't matter if it's after the fact. You've got to get it beforehand, okay? So here it is. Again, one-minute chart. So you rate the gap of the daily chart, and you're taking a trade in the one-minute chart. Open, drop, rally, broke, boom, hit it, you're in. Put the stop, and there it goes. So, I mean, you could have actually played this all day. The talk about dream targets, high up here is 84 something, low down here is 81 something, this is a big move. So we were talking about dollar moves. This was a huge move for this stock. And actually it was a really good, uh, you know, entry for this because the sell-off happened one, two, three, four, five, first five minutes of the day. Okay. Anyways, price of the entry, 83.69, stop is 84.81, share size, 1,200 bucks. Risk what? $984. Again, has to be the same or similar to the same. Okay. Very, very nice. Exit, 82.76 and 81.76, you can have these it out. Total profit you could have made today on this trade is $2,000. Again, do you see how chunking it, chunking it, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, tomorrow's Wednesday. So this is how you put together a week. This is how you put together a month. This is how you put together a year. And this is how you make upwards of 200 some thousand dollars a year. But you have to actually take the trade. This is very, very quick. If you aren't watching Guild, you'll never get this. It went poof. You would never get it. You have to know before 9.30 or this is happening. You find it on a scan and you're like, la, 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 and you miss it. So you have to have all of this situated and figured out before 9.30. And that's the beauty of what I do because I'm looking at the gap in the pre-market and I'm seeing the, the daily chart of this. If you wait until the open and you're looking on your scanner at, at you know, even at 9.35, sometimes it's too late. You'll miss it. And this is how many traders do it. They, they are too late. Then they try to take a late trade in these, and 80% of the move is over, the sell-off has happened, and, and then, they, then they lose, okay? Does my system calculate stops and profit targets? I actually teach in the class, and I manually write it in the room every morning and put it on the sheet, the targets for the stop. So, yes, you learn how to figure out the targets, and you will watch the targets to be hit. Does it hit every target every day? No, 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 it doesn't. But if you're up $1,500, are you going to let it go against you and lose if it's not at the target? No. So this is why some of these examples and some of the trades, and you have to make a money management decision, you've got to get out at least half of it or more than half of it if you're up money. You can hold a portion of the trade if it starts backing up. Like for example, this here to the target, but it would it would just again common sense. Why if you're up a if you're up a lot of money, why would you not get out of some of it? You would, okay, you would. So yes, you have targets, but not every trade goes to the target, and that's just a fact. So you know what you're looking for. You want it to get there. You can hold a piece of the trade. Sometimes sometimes things do actually go to the huge targets right away. I mean that happens. But I got to be honest with you. This this was I mean this hit through the first target here. It did. So you could have just done it and been all out completely. Totally done. All right. So really nice sell off today. And by the way, looking at this chart, this, this will continue. This will continue tomorrow. You could short the stock again tomorrow. Not as aggressively as today because the day of the gap was today. But I don't know where this opens tomorrow, but this will follow through. This is lower. All right. Any questions about the guild at all? Good questions from J.A. So again, going back to what you are following the big money, you're looking for each day, what is an institution going to do with this? You've got tons and tons of stocks in the market every day. I trade a different symbol because I don't know what's going to gap. Again, things gap at night, things gap in the morning. 
My rating system makes the prediction of the move, and then I know this is a good one. I may rate 10 different stock symbols, and one may only rate goods. Well, then that's easy. Then I do that one. I still have to wait for the setup, okay? I don't get in until after 9.30. I don't trade the pre and post markets, but I'm looking for the move between 9.30 and 10, and I'm looking for it quickly, 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 okay? So you want to make the money quickly, and that's another, another nice thing. I'm looking for the momentum. Usually what happens is an institution will know we want to dump this stock, and they know it way before the open. So they dump it into the open or go long it into the open, okay? So they know what they want to do with this. It's not like a the fat finger, all right? When you're selling 5 million shares of Guild or whatever ABC stock, you're not fat fingering the train. You're like, we are going to get out of this because of this reason and that reason. And their reasons for exiting stocks or taking trades are completely different than ours. Uh, we don't need to know that. I don't study fundamentals, but I'm telling you, they look at that stuff. But I'm reading the price of what they're doing. I'm reading the price action. That price action is telling me, I don't need to know the other stuff. I know the price. And I'm predicting the price movement with my 26-point rating system because of the gap, okay? But it's the institutions that are making it. So this is all that you need. You can do options, day trades, swing trades. Someone emailed me today about Forex. Uh, Forex only has one gap a week. You only have one close. But you can use it for anything that has a gap. We have another question here. Uh, are you using any technical indicators or just your rating system? No, just using my rating system. But on a chart... Here, I'll go back and show you really, really quickly. Mm -mm. I have moving averages. These are just simple moving averages, but this, this is, I mean, these are technical indicators if you want to call them these. I have them on here, but my charts are clean. So this is a 200 period moving average. This is a 50 period moving average. This is a 20, and this is an 8. Okay, and then you have the moving price, and down here is volume. You can't see it. It's cut off. But And these are Japanese candlesticks. So these are the things that I have on my chart, but... I'm not, you know, I, I, the rating system is how I'm making the decision, not the moving average, okay? And in the case of the moving average is here, look, the 8-pair moving average was swinging up. The 20-pair moving average here was swinging up. This was a short. So you can't just look at the, at the moving average and say, oh, this is a long because it's rallying. You can't because these wiggle and jiggle. There's not one indicator that you can buy or plop on your chart that's going to tell you, what to do. If it was, we'd all have it and no one would make any money in the market. So, you know what I'm saying? Again, again, 26 points is a lot of things to look at to, to predict. If I could come up with 2,600, I would. And I'd never lose. I'd never lose. And my risk amount would be $10,000 instead of 1000 But the point is that the more things that you can use to, to give you the, the odds to put the odds in your favor, you you know, it'd be nice to say we can use this moving average or that one, and that, that's enough, but, it, but, it, but it's just not. I mean, you've got to look at a lot of things in order to do it. So, like I said, it's, it's the perfection of one strategy, and then you can do it for many, many different things. John's asking, do options trades? Yes. Yes, I do. Again, I'm usually only in one at a time, very specific, and I will do them over a course of days or maybe weeks. Okay, you can do long-term option trades for months though too. But every day, I'm not day trading options. Every day, I'm day trading the actual stock. Okay, but you can day trade options. So many, many traders learn technical analysis, and I trade based on technical analysis. But it's really the gap. The strategy is the gap, and then the 26 points, which pulls it all together and makes the prediction, which is in the point. So, you know, you can do lots of things in the market, but if you don't have a strategy at all, you'll never make money. If you're doing several different strategies, I suggest still focusing on one. Learn one and get good at that one and make money with that and then learn others. It's very hard if you're not focused on one thing to make any money at all. And every day you get up and you get excited about this thing and that thing. And then you think, well, I will do this today. And you never have the consistency. The consistency in what I do to make this kind of money is because I'm looking for the same thing every day. And I either get it or I don't. And if the trade doesn't work, then I have the one loss and I'm done. So you will have losses in anything you do. There's not 100% anything, but your losses should be low. Your losses should be low, and you should not overtrade. And you should actually have a fixed risk. So even if you take a trade and it doesn't work, what's the worst thing that can happen? You lose one risk unit. And the next day, you can make up the profit for that and still be profitable within two days because the trades work. And go multiple risk units, as you saw. 
And today was a very, very good one. You just can't be a jack of all trades and 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 make money as a trader. It's just there's too much going on. There's too many different stocks. There's too many different strategies. There's too much excitement. You're you have money at risk. There's an emotion surrounding it. You've got to be very strict with what you do. You have to know what you're looking for. You have to be in and out quickly as a day trader. Uh, you you've got all kinds of things going on around during the day as it drags on economic data and the market moves. You want to just get that momentum which comes in a gap between 9.30 and 10 and take a quick trade and get out. And again, you're at less risk then. And the nice thing is you don't have to learn anything about fundamentals. I don't read the reports, none of that. So the consistency is reading the direction correctly, focusing on one strategy, focusing on one time frame, only doing one trade a day, stopping when I'm up and stopping when I'm down if the trade doesn't work. I'm describing you to a team, meaning doing one trade or... Trading, trading, trading. I mean, I've tried a lot of different things, and I think the reason that I, before I figured this out at the beginning, was I made, I made, I made five thousand dollars in a gap trade, and that was it for me. That I was hooked. And at that time, in fact, I didn't have a lot of size in that trade. I think I had fifteen hundred shares. I think I had fifteen hundred shares, and I made five thousand dollars. I said, "Holy cow!" I don't remember how much money I risked, but it was nowhere near a thousand dollars. I risked a couple hundred bucks, and I made like five grand. I said, "That's it." And then I wanted to do gap. And guess what? It was in a short. But I had no idea what I was doing then. It was the very first week I ever traded live money. I'll never forget it. And after that, by the end of the week, by Friday, I said, oh, my gosh, I could do one trade a week and, and I could quit my job. And then the next week, I, 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 didn't, I didn't do it right. And then I was like, wait a minute. And then the next week. And so it was, a, it was a back and forth, back and forth process until I came up with a point. But I knew there was something there into the open, which is between 9.30 and 10. I knew there was momentum. I knew that the way to make the money fast was the shorting. And I knew that I didn't have to I didn't have to risk thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars taking a position to make this kind of money. I mean, if you look at people always say about the percentages, if you look at the percentages of of, uh, of investment of money that you have to put out, okay, in a trade of the percentage of investment return on investment you get back, it's like it's like over 100 percent. It's like hundreds of percent. It's something silly because you're you're making so much. If you risk a thousand and you make three grand, what's your return? Three hundred percent. You're not going to make that anywhere, and certainly not in five minutes, or, or thirty minutes, or however long the trades go. So you know, it's it's the idea that it's it it does take learning it. Okay, you got to learn it. You got to learn the point. You got to apply it. You got to apply the information. It's an application. It's getting the knowledge, understanding gaps, taking the class. There's a cost to do that. But once you know it, you can make the money back very quickly for the class, and then then you're then you're running forward, then you're running ahead. But ultimately, this idea of just doing one thing is, is so important. Okay, you've got to become a master of what you do, and and that's what I do, and that's what I do, and I do it every day. When I trade and run the room, I call the trades live. People do them with me. You do have to do the class in order to be a trade room member because, this, you know, your trading is risky, and I want people to know what they're doing when they're risking their own money. I want people to be profitable. I want people to be successful. So then I teach the class that I do once a month and a weekend. And you really, really, you know, have to take it seriously. Even though you're only doing this for 30 minutes a day, if you don't take it seriously, you, you won't do well. Okay. You're trying too many things. I call out the trade live and live time, but I talk about the gap that I like before the open. So 9 a.m., half an hour before the open, and I'll say, you know, Guild or Cost or whatever. You know, I'll say Netflix. This is one I like. It's 22 points. Here's the resistance. Here's the score. Here's the target. But I also write in the room. I'll write in the room like 22 points or whatever, like in the typing room here right now. I'll write it, and I'll write the targets and the, and the support and resistance. And I'll write all the gaps I rate. But I usually am only doing one. I'm doing the top one. So I just do one. Yes, but I'll rate a couple because I don't know. I don't know which one I'm doing. Do I rate them all? So the idea is to do the highest one. If I rate five things, one is 20, one's 21, one's 22, one's 23, one's 24, that I'm doing the highest pointing gap because it has more higher percentage of possibility of working. Make sense? So we will talk about along here. This is, again, a great example of how if you don't get the directional bias right, guess what? You're, you're, you wouldn't make any money. A lot of people want to do reversals. Guess what? If you shorted costs, you lost. This was a gap up. Stop post here, gap up. 
Low of the first tail here is what? 160, um, uh, 158.13. High of the first move here is 163.21. Ran up $5. If you tried to short this here and thought, oh my gosh, it's going up too much. Guess what? You lost. Here, here, here. If you try to short this anywhere in the day, you lost. It was not a short. It was a long. If you tried to short this to fill the gap, you lost. It was a perfect, beautiful, fabulous gap. It opened and swoosh. And that's somebody teaching the class. But the bottom line is, if you went long, this you made a fortune. This is an expensive stock here, but that's an amazing move. Going back again to common sense, the common sense is you get the institutional push. You get institutions that are buying them. You would never have a stock that ran up $5 at $160 price point, strike price, five, 10 minutes into the day like that to run up $5 like that if institutions weren't buying the stock. They loved Costco. I don't know why they bought it, and I don't care. But you would know in the morning before 9.30 that, oh, my goodness, Costco is a good one. It's a long. Let's go long Costco. Let's wait till the open. Then you go along it. You could have gone along it on a one-minute high here. Boom. And it wouldn't even matter where you get out. All you're doing is taking it. And da -da -da. It doesn't even matter. This, by the way, went to the dream target, and this is still higher. And the thing is that it's so easy to do it if you know the direction. It's so easy. It, it's so easy if you know the direction right. And it's hard if you don't. So people try to scalp these that as, as reversals, you lose. And by the time you're in this, you should be done for the day and back to bed. So this is an institution. So the common sense is you're looking for what institutions are doing. A hedge fund, a bank, they're buying the stock. you got to be long it. If they're selling the stock or shorting it, you got to be shorted. You can't be against institutions in the market. They will run you over like a Mack truck. And if you're in them in the right direction, guess what? You don't even do anything. You press the button, you're like, la, and you take it out wherever you want. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. The point that many, many traders miss and why, why so many people lose is because they, they are trying to make it overly complicated. The, the points you have to learn, 26 things is a lot of things, but once you know it, you know it. But the rationale behind why you would go long this is not complicated. The rationale, the philosophy behind making money in the market, now just listen, this is very, very important, and I know it's getting late and I'm tired too, and a couple more slides. I, listen, the rationale behind why you will be successful as a trader or why you will lose is very critical. It's the, it's the title of the webinar. If a stock is being bought by an institution, you got to be long. If the stock is being sold by an institution, you better be short. If you're not, you'll lose. If you are, you can easily make money. The philosophy behind what I do is common sense. Learning the points, you must learn, and that is complex, and it's a 16-hour class. But the philosophy behind why the points work is not complex, and is actually common sense. I mean, does this make sense, what I'm saying? So anyways, I traded the open. We talked about gas. Netflix was the gas that happened the other week. Again, one-minute chart on Netflix. Beautiful sell-off. This is the direction you want to be in. Okay. Boom. Again, here's the moving averages. You can see them, but, you know, you're not doing anything with these here. You're shorting the stock. So you're looking for to do it in the direction of the gap, but you know it before the open. Predicting it is how you're going to make money, but it's the big money. That's where the edge happens. The edge is, what is ABC Hedge Fund, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, what are they going to do today? Are they going to sell gill or are they going to buy gill in that gap down? You need to know so you know how to take it. And the points come from the daily chart, so that's how you can make the prediction. It's this idea of gambling, taking, sometimes people take something, like Netflix is a good example. People probably went long it, then shorted it, then went long it, then shorted it, then went long it again. People probably took that trade like three, four times and got stopped out in both directions. I don't ever take anything in any other direction other than the one direction that I'm taking it. I don't go short something, then flip it and go long. That's dangerous too. Now, someone asked you about uh, Google. I'm in a Google trade right now. This is from last week. This is moving, moving, moving. I'm in at the earnings or Thursday night. But this, again, just shows you, you can make your goal for the week in one trade. So if, if you did the Google and got out of it last week, I'm still in the position. I had 50 contracts, which is 5,000 shares. Again, the 5,000 shares is a good position size. You could have done one trade, got out, not even held it. You could have made $6,000. You didn't have to do one day trade last week. Okay? That's real money. So this is the chart off of today. 
Yes, you can do my system with swing trades to JA, but you're in them and you're looking for bigger targets. Okay, you'd be looking for bigger targets in the swing trades. So I'm reading the institutional footprints of money in the stock, just like the Google. If Google's getting bought, you want to be long. If Google's getting sold off, you want to be short. Google's getting bought. So I'm long it. So I own calls in Google. Okay, that's how I'm up the money in that position. So you're looking only for the power of money. And you can't make any money in the market unless you're in, in the right direction. And I've called the market long, even today, even though the market was a teeny weeny little bit of a rent today, it's still higher, still, still higher. And I called the market long in the SPY, which is an ETF, correctly because I read the gap. So this was the move in the market had a big flush down. This was, gosh, weeks ago now. And then we had a gap up, right? This is the Brexit reaction in the market. Then we gapped up, then we gapped up, then we gapped up. How many gap ups happen actually in there is that you could have gone long? Quite a few. So this is institutional money buying the spy. So you can use this for ETFs as well. Very, very important, okay? You've got to have a system to be successful. So for me, it's the 26 points. And again, I like to short. It's a checklist. The checklist works. That's how Guild, you would have known to short Guild today. Instead of going long at a support, you would have known this was a short. It rated 22 points. So my checklist measures the high probability of directional bias for the entire day, that the stock will have a big move in the day, drop to $3. That's all profit, no matter where you get out. Early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10. Precise entries of follow-through and a good risk-reward target potential. So it's about being consistent. It's about being profitable. It doesn't mean you'll never lose in any trades that you take, but you should lose very few times. And if you're not ever trading, then you shouldn't, you shouldn't be down, okay? Having profit helps you get confidence and conviction to do this thing as a career. You've got to see the results. If you're green every day for five days or five months in a row, you will get the confidence to do it. And having a mentor or someone like me to teach you a system and call the trades live really helps people. And like I said earlier today, I, I developed this for myself. I, didn't, I never thought I'd be teaching people, and I think that's one of the reasons my system is so good. The other benefit is you're out quick. Sometimes I'm in trades for minutes, but I'm usually done every day by 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. I, I'm in New York, like I said. Any questions from anyone? So I teach a class. If you are interested, it's this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, July 30th and 31st. It teaches the 26 points. It teaches what the stock switch is. I teach six different entries. I teach targets, the exit. It's technical analysis on a very advanced level. And it teaches you how to read the institutional positioning in charts. It teaches you how to read gaps. Many people out there that trade gaps don't do them right. And so then people shy away from gaps, but there's so much money you can make in them. There's so much money you can make in them and so quickly, so quickly. But you have to get the direction right, okay, you know. So the class is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Tuition is $49.99, and you can be anywhere in the world and take it. It's online, and it, you can redo it as many times as you want. So it's Eastern time zone. And if you take the class now and we're going to retake it in October, you can certainly do that. If you want to sign up, deadline's Friday. Email me for more information if you want to sign up. And if you want a trial to the trading room, you can email me at info at the stockswish.com. And you can trial the room before the class, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, ask me any questions that I'm going to pull up tonight because Gala had put some, put some picks for tonight. Just hang on. I'm going to put up, I'm just going to put up my charts here. He's telling me the gappers tonight. Well, let's look at them. And write any questions if you have any. Ah, let me just see. Is the market up tonight? The market must be up tonight. Market must be up tonight because Google's up tonight after hours here. Yay. What's gapping up? Just quickly, quickly, Galahad, tell me that because Google's up tonight after hours. I'm still in that whole position. Apple. Hold on, wait, hold on. Let's look at that. Let me just look at the spy. Apple's up. Did Apple have rain tonight? Are you sure? Apple. 
Apple had earnings tonight. I didn't even know that when I took that. <gasps> oh, my Lanta. This is taking forever to load. Is Twitter up? Look at this. I'm going to fall asleep before this loads. Here, hold on. No, Twitter's down. Oh, you know what? I have to, this is, I have to re-sign in. Hold on. I think it was. Oh, my Lanta. Apple's up tonight in the earnings. Hold on. I, have to, I just want to look at the gap and see if it's really along. Like along in the day tomorrow. Not because with me this evening, because I had a horrible day. <gasps> Look how big the market's up. <gasps> Hold on. Oh, my Lanta. Here. All right, let's not talk. This is, I'm done with the webinar, but ask me questions. I'm looking at this tonight because this is going to, everything's going to get gapping up tomorrow. <gasps> and I just got done telling you the market was higher. I knew it. Even though I saw the talk today, I just told you. And I want to look at this tonight. I didn't even know that I was going to be I love this stuff, people. Oh. Let me just see where we closed this buy, because I didn't even look where we closed, but I knew we were hanging, hanging like a thread, and I knew we didn't drop today. We didn't really drop today. We looked like we were dropping, but we didn't. All right, let's look at Apple. Yeah, the spy is us. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Is there any big names out in the morning pre-market? Tomorrow? Quickly. Galahad, look at that. I didn't know Apple's tonight. I honestly didn't even know. We should have done an option in this. I've just been too busy. <gasps> That's amazing. Yeah. This, I hope this looks better in the morning. The better this looks, the better it is. Listen, this is good. This looks like a nice one, and I'm not rating this now because I'm tired and it's 637, and I've had a long day, but look at this. Oh, my Lanta. As long as this holds 104, this is a long. There it is. Just let me look at this. Galahad, you're in the uh, you're in the Google with me. Are you still in the whole thing? Just just tell me if it's a big name out tomorrow. Just a big name. What like like Apple's a big name. Twitter is Twitter has a problem with its life. Uh, let's look at this. God, I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to go to bed early. There it is. So this is a live gap. It's a live gap. It's being affected by gapples. So Google is gapping up tonight. The price is higher. I'm going to take this off. See, show pre-post market activities. See, I'm going to show you this right now. So the stock closed today at 738.46. Boom. Tonight it's gapping up live. This is live right now. Here it is, 638. This is still moving. This bar went off 10 minutes ago in nine minutes. 740.25. It's gapping up. So we actually were right on the day and the close because we opened. We opened today. Hold on. Where did we open? We opened at 739.04 and we closed at 738.46. So we had a 50 cent teeny weeny red. Now we're green in the gap. And tomorrow we also have a, we have an FOMC minutes too, don't we? We do, or something tomorrow. All right, I'll just quickly look at the short. Does anyone have any questions for me about anything? Anything about the class, anything about what I do? Ask me now. We're over the time, but we started late. Very exciting here. Thrilled that I'm still in that trade. FOMC tomorrow, Facebook is tomorrow night or tomorrow morning. Red Hat is... I don't see Red Hat doing anything. Is this the one you want me to look at? No, A Camp. I'm sorry. Where did I get Red Hat? I don't know. I can't think anymore. I've been up since 5 a.m. You can't just join the trade room job. The trade room is only for students. 
Yeah, you might have missed that too. I said it earlier. Uh, let me look at this thing. Okay, so this is gapping down clearly. Geez, where did this close? 5804. This is the situation here. This is a good gap, and it's lucky it is because it's going to be hard to short tomorrow with the market going higher. It's going to be a quick one. I don't. I'm not rating this now. Like I said, I'm tired. I'll wait till the morning. But you could rate it at night if you need the system. But the only way I'll short tomorrow is a good one, anyways. This looks good, but the market's higher. I mean, it would be a quick, quicker, quick, quick trade for me tomorrow. I mean, you know, maybe we go long Apple. I don't even know. I mean, Apple's a really good gap. That's taking a beating and it's it's all situated now. I don't know what the earnings said. Like I said, I don't I don't oh this one's good too. Wait a minute. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know. I'm gonna rate these both. I don't know which is better. I'll wait to the morning. RHI is good, ACAM is good. These are shorts. I don't know what they rate yet. I have to rate them, but those are two ones I will rate in the morning. And Apple is along. I know Apple's along without even rating it, but I still will rate it. Yeah, you can John, email Paul and email me, and I'll send you a trial. You can be in tomorrow morning. Uh, this one, I'm not going to do anything with. No data, one tech. It is gapping down. I'm sure that it's real. This will trade tomorrow with volume. Not enough information here. CHRW. I'm more, I'm more convinced. The days to trade, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are the best days to trade. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, let me look here. It's almost like you always get something. This is very hard to trade. I don't know what this will rate. I like the other two better. I still will rate this, though. This is a hard, hard stock to trade. What do I mean? Whippy. And you can just look at the chart. This is like a whip monster. Spready, whippy, hard to trade. Probably not doing this, but I'll rate it. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks for coming. You are more than welcome to email me if you want to try to the room, or if you're interested in the class this weekend and want to learn my method, email me. Go to YouTube, subscribe, sign up to get the updates on there of the market and stuff. And I don't know what I'm going to do tonight, but I'm going to do something. I mean, tomorrow. There's a lot of stuff tonight. Very excited about Google and Maybe I'll do a video on it right now and post it on YouTube. Didn't even know that Apple had earnings tonight. Didn't even know. I've been too busy to even look. Can you believe that? Look. And I considered getting out of that last week. Half the position at least, and I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I had the whole position. No, I didn't. I didn't, but I did look at the econ data, so I knew that Wednesday would be a pivotal day. So you see how everything's coming together? So everything's coming together here. Market's in a rest period here. It's resting. It's taking a nap. It's taking a nap. Here, let's just count. Here, if you want to stay, I'm going to do a video right now on the market. For those of you that want to stay, I'll leave the room open. If you want to go, have a good night. I'm going to tape a video on the market right now and post it on YouTube because I want to remember what I'm going to say. Because I haven't done a market video in like more than a week. So just let me put the recorder on. I'm going to turn the thing back off. I'll be right here. I'm going to tell you exactly what I see right now, and I want to tape it for myself or I'll never.